All the little kids can hold him, and I don't have to worry about him biting anyone. He's just an amazing little bird. The other time that you don't want to touch an Amazon, though, is when they are splaying. I don't know if you know what that is, but they, Amazons have this funny behavior where they, their tail fans out and their eyes dilate, and it could be because they're really happy, they're really excited, or they're really angry. But no matter what, when they're doing that, don't touch them because you can move that bit and it'll be nasty. Okay? So give them time to calm down. <laughs> um, Oliver has done that a couple of times when he gets overexcited. Like, he, like sometimes in an event like this, he goes nuts. Like he just loves people so much that he, uh, he, gets, he gets overexcited. And so he will start to play. And it's just not a good time because you're going to guarantee a bite. It's almost like they have no control whatsoever. And uh, and they can't stop themselves. They just, they just bite. You ready? Come here. I'm gonna do your nails, and I'm gonna do them with the table. Um, like I said, I n I normally use the flippers first, unless they're small birds. The smaller birds, like teals and and budgies and stuff, you can just use the Dremel and not even worry about the flippers, unless they're really bad, like a spiraling or something like that. Another thing. Um, to watch for too is sometimes the nails actually curl right around and what you want to do when you're clipping them is put them on a bit of an angle so that it, it'll stop it from, from doing that. It seems to help shape the nail a little bit so you just want to clip it on a bit of an angle that way so to stop that curl and it, it kind of helps it to grow more out instead of in. But we've had birds that come in and their nails are like this and uh, they can't grab onto anything like that. It's funny to watch them because they come in like that and the nail is all spiraled and they go to grab onto something and they actually do this to hold on to it. They, they've, it's happened over such a length of time that they've learned they have, have to do that in order to grasp it. <coughs> what you'll find after you groom a pair too is that within the, for the next, for that rest of that day and sometimes the next day, they usually get quiet and a little bit more docile. They don't talk and it just seems to happen. I don't know why, but it's just something that, that does seem to happen. They get a little bit quieter. So if your customer phones you up panicked that the bird's being quiet, that's normal for a day or so. Um, they also are a little flexier because they don't have those sharp needles that they've gradually grown into in order to hold things, so they might fall a little bit more or, or not be able to latch on as, as well, especially if they're on your clothing and stuff like that because there's nothing for them to grasp onto because they don't have that point anymore. Are you ready? Are you ready? Can you do him by yourself? I do them all by myself. I do them a cause by myself because, like I said, then I feel more comfortable that way because I know when they're shifting right. and then I can readjust them. But it's just because I end up getting bit so many times when I get somebody's help. Like, the owners want to help. Yeah, yeah, the the so yeah exactly. And those are the worst ones. I mean, Brett, Brett and I can do them, you know, fairly easily. But then, like I said, I'm still more comfortable doing it myself. But because you guys probably aren't going to do the volume I do, you might be better off with a partner, somebody that's going to hold the head. And then, so, like I said, you just expose the one area of the wing or the, or the foot or whatever it is you're working on, the beak, and just um, work on that on its own. Unless they get somebody like you that doesn't do it, bring the whole bird to watch. Yeah. But, um, there are people who love birds up there. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're like uh, potato chips, you can't have just one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And all it's not fussy on being groomed either. Barkman's favorite. And you think after eight years you can do it, but no, it doesn't happen. But I think a lot of that has to do with um, the fact that they just don't like it. Come here, I know you don't like it, but got what? <laughs> nope. I know. So I've got to buy the toe. Yeah. <laughs> this is our little docile all over that will go to anybody. Amazon are the most fidgety of the whole bunch. And even when I'm doing it myself, I usually end up getting bit because they just squirm so much. So I just wrap them so that their head's really covered because um, I can just cover them in a whole layer like that. Now, like I said, they are the most squiggly of the whole bunch. Yes. And I'm going to put the perch on his one hand, on his one toe, so that he just holds onto that for me. Yeah, because he's grabbing. He's, the other thing is, too, uh, and we had this happen the other day with the one bird grabbed the scissors in their one foot while I was trying to cover them together, so you got to be really careful that way. I can get you. Yeah. So, Kill the bird. You me. so Oliver is missing one toenail, too, by the way. But that's, um, How did that happen? I had a bird come in, and we just got him out of the carrier, and within seconds he jumped on the cage and bit his toe. And it happened in like split seconds, okay? Oh, my God, I got this. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're going to hold it.
I just said, like Amazon, I always get bit. Oh, so much for that video. But I'm gonna get hold of them, okay? Oh. No.